Shalom everyone. Let me first of all say thank you to those who have emailed, text, called, whatever, and uh, wished Kathy and I uh, a recovery. We're, we're pretty good. Uh, still coughing a little bit, and so my apologies if that happens. I don't, I'm probably not going to take the time to edit everything out. But uh, feeling a lot better. I know that many people have gone through this, and uh, it's, a, it's a tough one. It's uh, it's a tough one. I don't know how to be sick. <laughs> I just really don't because I, I just hardly ever get sick. So, uh, but uh, we're through. I think we're we're through to the to the better part of it. And uh, appreciate your prayers. All right. Uh, one announcement before I get going on this week's Torah portion, <clears throat> and that is that Bezrat uh, Hashem, God willing, next Tuesday, uh, which is January sixteenth. I will be on an LL jet heading to Israel um, through a lot of counsel, a lot of uh, a lot of prayer, a lot of thought um, for Kathy, for myself. Uh, some events just kind of came together, and uh, I won't go into all the details regarding that. But I feel it is time. We have been sending funds, of course, since day one. We, we send funds to Israel every single month. But um, uh, since the inception of this ministry, I believe. But uh, in the, the last 90, 95 days, we have sent literally thousands of dollars. Thank you all for your giving, for your help in that. For those who have been able to give a, a small amount, a large amount, uh, it's uh, it has come together and has made an impact. Um, I, I just feel like at this point in time, it is uh, it is the right timing to go. Uh, to, I mean, I, I don't have an agenda. All right, I I've got places to stay, I got people to see, but um, I don't really have an agenda. And so I would appreciate it if any of you that would uh, would pray that whatever. The Father has for for me for us. Okay, I'm going. It's it's my face, but it's all of you uh, that I will be talking about as I'm there. And so, uh, if you would, uh, I would appreciate your prayers during this time. Uh, it's expensive. If uh, anyone would like to help out, uh, yes, I'll be taking funds. We have uh, funds in our account already. Uh, the maximum that I can take on an airplane. So, um, <coughs> we'll, as I said, we, uh, we continue to give, and um, I'll be visiting with numerous uh, people that we have, uh, that have been helping with, they've been the conduits on, on that side of the ocean, and so I'll be meeting with them. Um, uh, there's, there's some other possibilities of some meetings that I've, I'm not even, uh, I'm not at liberty right now to talk about. So we'll just see what, what happens, okay? Uh, if you would like to, to help with the expenses of the trip, uh, that would be appreciated. You can, uh, you can donate through our website or send a check, whatever you'd like to do. But uh, I've, uh, we've already been given incredible favor. I'll be staying in Jerusalem for the first, uh, I'll, I'll be there for about nine days, I believe it is. And so the first, uh, the first days that I'm there, I uh, contacted a hotel that I've worked through many times. Many of you have stayed there. And uh, basically, uh, I, they're, they're giving me a full, the, the, <laughs> they're giving me room and meals for less than I can get a hotel room for in the United States. So... Uh, favor already in that. Uh, excited about the trip. I'm uh, uh, a lot of a lot of mixed emotions. A lot of things going on in my in my mind right now, of course. So a lot needs to be done between now and next Tuesday when I go. Again, thank you for your prayers during that time. Um, <clears throat> it was something else. I can't remember what it was. So uh, I'll just get it in the tour portion. And maybe you'll come to me along the way. Oh, by the way, yes, I will be, uh, I know what it was. I, I uh, scheduled to go visit our drone. I say our drone because uh, though we were not able, we did not raise the complete funds for it. Uh, we've got a significant amount in that drone in one of the communities up in Judea, Samaria. And uh, that's life-saving, folks. That is life-saving. 
and so I'll be visiting that and the hopefully the team that is going to be uh, trained to use that. I'll also be up with Hyoville for a couple of days and uh, spend some time with those guys. So I'll be able to give a little bit more of a report on maybe what's happening with Operation Itai. Okay, now I know what I need to really talk about. Uh, I will, while I'm there, Bezrat uh, Hashem, this is my plan that I am going to be doing the best I can to put you on the ground in Israel. I will be po posting, uh, my plan is to post on Facebook Live uh, during the day. I'll be taking some pictures and posting those. I'll be taking video. If I'm able to do interviews with people, I'll be posting those online. Uh, for those of you that are not on Facebook, what I'm, again, planning to do is when I come in in the evening, to to compile all of those photos all of those uh those videos and write the videos into one file edit that into one file that will be posted on um on my vimeo site on my youtube site on rumble and so if uh you know if you want to to get though I'll, I'll put it back on facebook again so if you'd like to to follow us along the way get other people involved um here's and I'll, I'll remind you god willing i'll be doing a video next week but i'll remind you uh that when it comes to facebook and and uh and on all these it's all it's all driven by algorithms i don't understand algorithms but it's all driven by that if you just go and look at something on facebook let's just look at that one first if you go and you look at something, <clears throat> uh, okay, that's, that's fine. If you like it, uh, that puts you into a different category. If it is shared or if there's comments, okay, comments are the main one. Comments drive this thing is my understanding. And so if you're following me on Facebook regarding uh, the time in Israel, I would ask you not just to like something, though you could like it, but um, to also put a quick comment in the tagline underneath there. Put a quick comment, and that drives us out there into more places on Facebook. If those of you that are, are, are social media savvy and can give me any tips on this, please, I, I would be uh, very much appreciative of that. Okay, getting into the Torah portion. Uh, Exodus chapter 6, starting in verse 2. Adonai, uh, Yah spoke to Moshe, he said to him, I am Yudhevavhe, I appeared to Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov as El Shaddai, although I did not make myself known to them by my name Yudhevavhe. Uh, that, that's not really a true statement, okay? If we go back, and my thanks to the reminder, for, uh, I got uh, Moshe Kempinski in, in his commentary this week, going back and quoting Rashi, that uh, we, we see in the lives of Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, that he did reveal himself, or by his name, yud heh vav -Heh. So what's going on here? Is, is the Almighty confused? Absolutely not. But it says that he revealed himself as El Shaddai. And if we go to that, those, that word, that name, that title, Okay, um, every, we could say that yud heh vav -Hey is as close to a name for the Almighty that we have. Everything else is a title. It's an attribute. It's an aspect of who he is. And so when he reveals himself as El Shaddai or uh, Adonai Sabaot, the Lord of Hosts, or these various things, he is trying to relate to us how he is relating to us, how he's revealing himself. He, you know, it, the, the scripture says, no man has seen yud heh vav -Hey and lived. Uh, I believe that the translation on that is, no man has seen the fullness. That if you and I were to ever see everything that he is, this is why he said to Moshe, you, know, you, there's, you can't. No, I mean, you may have been in the burning bush. You may have, have, have eaten with a, a, a part of me. You may have seen a part of me on Mount Sinai. But Moses, in, in your human frailty, 
uh, in your nature, if I was ever to sit, to show you everything that I am, you would explode. Our literal being, I believe, th this would be like um, a, a nuclear explosion of our flesh. That every molecule would come undone in us if we were to see everything that he is. So, with this, he says, I reveal myself to as El Shaddai. Uh, in, in the El Shaddai is, is literally is translated as the, the all-sufficient one, the provider of all, that, uh, you know, whatever you need in the moment, I can be that. That's, that's kind of some thoughts regarding that title of him. But it is also about that in the process of working through Avraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, he was using creation. He was using the, the natural realm. He was not going outside of that realm. Um, when, you know, Abram with the, the kings and the dreams and all those things, he was still operating in, in this natural realm. But when it comes to the, the idea of what is going to happen in the Exodus, he is going to bring forth the spiritual realm into the natural realm. It is going to be something that in the end, people are going to be, have to look back and go, wait a minute, this could not happen. These things can only be happening if there is a thinning of the veil between the natural realm and the spiritual realm uh, to bring in what is going on in Israel right now. I, I remember on the evening of October 7th, uh, as uh, Kathy and I, this was the, the last night of Sukkot, uh, Kathy and I had gone out to our son Daniel's and, and their family. We had decided to do not a Simcha Torah, but a, a prayer meeting. We had a number of us gathered there in his living room, and we began to worship, we began, began to pray, and I remember so distinctly one thing that I prayed that night, that, the, that books would be written, volumes would be written of the miracles that were, would happen during this war. I've uh, studied through the years the miracles of 1948, of 1967, of 1973, uh, I have talked with people that have been in uh, in some of those wars, and and the, the 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 books that have been written, the movies that have been done, the documentaries that have been done, and I remember on that night asking that the Father would write that there would be volumes upon volumes more than has ever been written regarding the miracles of this war. I've heard some of those. But I believe that in the end, uh, there, there is going to be volumes written. When the soldiers come out of Gaza, when they come out of the north, and are able to sit down and to, to evaluate the things that happen, I believe that there's going to be revelation that's going to come forth of who the Almighty is and how he has had a hand in this war from the beginning. So it is about the uh, that he is that he is going to thin the veil. Now, let, let's consider this on another level regarding the land of Israel. Uh, anybody that's ever that's that's been with me on a tour, I, I talk about this when I'm there. I think that many of you, even if it was not you weren't there with me, but others, you uh, some people go to Israel and are oblivious to anything. Okay. Uh, it's, it's amazing to me how many people I have led on a tour and their life has, it, it was like there was nothing happening. You know, the light's on, well, it's on dim. Uh, <coughs> can't make myself laugh, I'll make myself cough. Uh, the light was on, but it was a very, it was kind of like a night light that was on, um, barely. And they came back and the nightlight turned off. There was just nothing that happened in their lives. But 
I, I'm not talking about those people, and I have no idea how to deal with that. But uh, for for many of you that are listening to me, you know, you th- there is a difference in the spiritual uh, when you are there. As you're walking the streets of Jerusalem, and I fully expect to, to see this when I'm there, to feel this experience, as you're walking the streets of the land of Israel, you can feel the spiritual climate change at times. Uh, <clears throat> I had some, I have some friends that were have been with me on, uh, I think, three tours now, and uh, they said, you know, the first couple of times they were there, it was like, wow, look at all this stuff. I mean, look, there's a dove flying around, and and look, there's another falafel shop, and you know, and, and just kind of, you know, a wonderful time, cried through the land. But the last time they were there, they stayed. They were sick the whole time, and they grieved through the whole time. And I was talking to them not too long ago, and they said, you know, is this if the father pulled the veil back, and we got to see the spiritual warfare that was happening there? Um, it's it's beyond comprehension sometimes. But it, it's like, it, it, and not to to be science fiction here. But it's like Israel is <clears throat> the focus of a beam. If you, if you take a, a flashlight or a, uh, a laser and you shine that at a spot, if you've got a, a flashlight that has a very focused beam on it, and you shine it as a, at a spot, there is a spot in the center that is the brightest. Outside of that, the farther you go from in the peripheral of this, the dimmer that light becomes. I think this goes to a statement that Barry Phillips made of the, it says that Israel is the apple of his eyes, the pupil, the center, and that if we are in anywhere outside of the land of Israel, um, we are in his peripheral vision. So this is the same thing. And so for this time period, though his presence is, yes, all over the world, it is focused in the land and on the land and the people of the land of Israel. And if you and I are in South Africa or or the United States or, or wherever you may be, you may be able to experience a level of his light, a level of his Shekinah, but it's not going to be the same. But the verse, the, the word of Zechariah, I believe it is, says that there's coming a day in which the whole earth will be filled. That that brightness that is upon Israel will, I do not believe the focus will ever change. But the light will be able to travel to the ends of the earth to where you will receive, there, there, you will walk in the same level of glory. <laughs> Sound Pentecostal there. <coughs> Again, I can't make myself laugh. I'll make myself cough. Uh, you will, you will walk in the same level of Shekinah if you were in Papua New Guinea. If you are in Christchurch, New Zealand, which will probably have a name change by the end. Um, if you were in Johannesburg, South Africa, if you are in Moscow, wherever you may be, Timbuktu, and I know where that's at, wherever you may be, the same level of the Shekinah will be there. Until then, the focus, though, is on the land and the work that is happening in Israel. Okay, uh, wow, I need to move on. Also, with them I established my covenant to give them the land of, Israel, of Canaan, the land where they wandered about and lived as foreigners. The, the word here is kum brit. It's actually kum brit uh, alef tav. So he says, I have established kum I have made to arise, talked about that word numerous times. I have made to arise the, the, my Brit, my covenant, 
and then it is tied to the letters Aleph Tav right there. So let's let's kind of retranslate that a little bit, seeing what the the meaning is that uh, I have also established my I I established the work of my Messiah Aleph Tav pointing to the Messiah. I have established the work of the covenant of the Messiah in their lives. And he's going on and saying, I'm about to do it with the whole house of Israel. As he says, I have listened to their groaning. All right, talked about that last week. They were groaning, crying out, just, just groaning and crying out. They weren't looking up. They were just groaning. They were just complaining. But he's faithful. He is faithful to his covenant and was listening to that. And it says, and I have, and I have remembered my covenant. Now, it's not that you forgot it. It's not like, you know, you, you lose your car keys. Where did I put my covenant? Where did it, where, no, that's not the way it is. It is that there are, there are times that, I don't understand this, but there are, there are times and seasons upon this earth. It's, it's, it's like uh, the, the roller coaster. There's times you're going up, there's times you're coming down. There's, there's ebb and flow regarding the, uh, the fulfillment of prophecy. Why is this? That's up to him, far beyond me. But it's, it is, he's, it's as if he's, he's saying here, I am now acting upon. I, I've been sitting back watching and waiting for the fullness of time. And now that fullness of time has, has, is, is now, and I am acting upon it. And here is what it's going to look like. It is the five I wills. Now I know that at Pesach we're told to, uh, about the four I wills, but there's actually five. First of all, I will free you from the forced labor of the Egyptians. I will take you as my people, I will be your Elohim. I will bring you into the land. I will give it to you as your inheritance. Okay, this is why I go to Revelation chapter 21 as the beginning of Scripture because the I wills that are listed here in, uh, in Exodus chapter 6 are an echo of what is Revelation chapter 21. So it is, first of all, I'm going to free you from the forced labor of this world system. Let's, let's translate it into our days. That which you and I go through of the, the, the weeds in the garden, okay? And you may not have a garden, but you know what it's like to have weeds. It's like you open your, your I mean, I know it's old fashioned to open a checkbook, but uh, you open up your account in the bank and it's like there's weeds growing. There, it's, there, there's things consuming the nutrients of my bank account. Uh, you, you, you purchase something, it's like it breaks and you got to clean it and you got to take care of it and you got to oil it. You got to do all of these things. And it's like we, we spend so much of our life having to take care of life instead of really uh, being a part of life. I'm going to free you from that. Uh, I'm going to take you as my people. So he is going to free them from the ownership of Pharaoh. They were owned in that day. They were owned owned by, we don't understand this in the United States and Western culture about being owned. I, I was talking with Hanoka uh, the other day about how they did a, a sit-in. Um, they actually recreated the, the, the plagues of Egypt for Pan Am Airlines. And this was regarding, uh, the in the country of Syria, I believe it was, Syria or Lebanon, 
that they were holding Jews there and not letting them leave. We know that about Russia. All right? Uh, we, do, we don't, most of us don't understand the concept. We, I've got a passport, I've got a driver's license, I can drive all over the United States. Uh, <clears throat> you know, as long as you're doing it legally and lawfully, you're, you're probably not going to even be pulled over. But uh, you, you don't have to check your papers yet at the border of, of a state. New York, I think, is getting close to that, and maybe California. But uh, that's another subject. So we don't understand this, this control level of show me your papers. Uh, they understood it in that day. Uh, we may understand it somewhere in the future. I will, <coughs> I will deliver you from the ownership of Pharaoh, and I will be your Elohim. I will be as Pharaoh is to you today. But I'm, you, and, and the problem that we see in the rest of the book of Exodus is the mental transition for the people to come from the place of Pharaoh. They, they, kept, they, they kept looking to Elohim through the same lens that they had served Pharaoh. That's, that's an easy thing to do. Um, somebody that's gone through abuse in their life, uh, especially a father figure. They've gone through uh, abuse from, from any, any level of, of someone in leadership or whatever. Tend to, when they come into a relationship with the Almighty, tend to bring that baggage over into their relationship. And the, uh, the, the, the goal is that we would leave that baggage behind and understand that he is a, as the, the song says, a good, good father. Um, okay, so then he says, I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Avraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. Um, again, to quote Ephraim uh, or Ramona Frank, Without Israel as our destination, we are destined to become just another denomination wandering in the wilderness. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I see that happening around me today. Why am I going to Israel in a few days, Bezrat Hashem? It's, uh, it is to put my face in front of the people. Uh, not just the people of Israel. But the people that are that are the messianic Hebrew roots people that need to come to this realization that uh, in this 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 time in which in fact when I as I'm there this going to be is going to be the starting of the caucuses and the elections in the United States and 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 people getting caught up and making exile great again. Um, I'm, I'm desiring that, please understand what I'm about to say, that I'm desiring that me being in Israel, and I, I'm not, I'm, I'm really nothing in this, okay? But somehow the Father has allowed me to do this. And I'm, I'm to say humbled is, is a, uh, not even the right word. Um, I, I don't know what to do with it. I, I just, let me just leave it there. I think probably those of you that know me understand what I'm trying to get at. Um, but I desire that my presence there will be convicting to people regarding those who have allowed 90 something days to already let them forget what happened on October 7th. I hope you get what I'm saying. I will bring you in the land. And not only will I bring you into the land, <clears throat> I will give it to you as your inheritance. It, it's, it's one thing to be taken somewhere. Um, I'm possibly going to have to go down to Atlanta the night before because of weather. Uh, which is, I, I can't stand that because the hotel prices at Atlanta airport, but, um, I'm, you know, I, I'm going to, I, I got a room, I'm going to rent a room for the night. 
they're probably not going to give me the hotel. All right. Uh, the Almighty, when we are taken to the land in the end, it's not like we're going to be there on a rental basis. It's, it's not going to be like the, you know, the, an Airbnb to where you have an expiration date. It's, it's going to be like <clears throat> going on online, uh, getting an Airbnb for 30 days in your, your absolute favorite resort place ever, which should be Israel. Um, just saying. And at the, at the end of the 30 days, the owner of the Airbnb comes to you and says, oh, by the way, uh, while you're here, I signed the deed to the property over to you. It's all paid for. It's totally yours. That's, that is the process. I'm going to take you all the way from being a slave in Egypt to giving you the land of inheritance. Now, I haven't gone a lot. I haven't got far, have I? Uh, he, he, he tells him, he tells Moshe, <clears throat> by the way, um, when, you, when you go to Pharaoh and, uh, and tell him, you know, all of this that I'm going to do, and you tell him about the, uh, the, the whole idea of, you know, let my people go, he says to him uh, up front, you know, he's not going to listen to you, okay? Um, Moses, Moses says, I, I can't speak real well. Uh, he's, he's not going to listen to me. And God's like, yeah, you're right, he's not. Because I have a plan, I have a purpose. I, I'm not here just doing... A, a temporary work again. There's there's this discussion in Israel now about the political leaders that are saying, "Well, you know, I, I know that originally we said we we're going to wipe out Hamas, but uh, let, let's, you know, maybe maybe we're not going to be able to do the full job." Okay. Now, when the Almighty does what He is doing, it's not going to be half-hearted. It's going to be everything. Go and read the, the words of Jeremiah. The only time that he says that I, I found that he says in the scripture that I will do something with my whole heart and being is when he says I will bring you in the land. And it's going to be a complete work. And Moses says something interesting. He says, I, um, I'm a man of uncircumcised lips. Now, in, in uh, uh, David Stern's translation, it says, I'm such a poor speaker that Pharaoh won't listen to me. Okay, this, this is not, <clears throat> I do not believe that David got a hold of this one real well because the, the, the wording in Hebrew is that I am a man of uncircumcised lips. Um, what is he saying here? He's, let, let me speculate. Let me kind of throw it out, and you can you know, disagree with this one or not. It's whatever. Um, I'm not worthy. My lips are not worthy of the task that you are calling me to. I got that, Moses. I understand. And to further understand it, we go to Isaiah chapter 6. And it, uh, I, I'm going to go on down to, um, uh, I'll, I'll start in verse 4. You, you can start in verse 1. The doorpost shook at the sound of their shouting, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe to me, I too am doomed, because I am a man with unclean lips, living among a people with unclean lips, have seen with my own eyes, the king, Adonai Savaot, the Lord of hosts. One of the seraphim flew to me with a glowing coal in his hand, which he had taken with, a thong, with tongs from the altar. He touched, the, he touched my mouth with it and said, Here, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is gone. Your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of Yudhe Vavhe saying, 
Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? I answered, Hineni. Now, here I am, send me. We've talked about that word Hineni so many times. All right. So we see that in these words of Isaiah, is he not saying basically the same thing that Moses is saying? Um, I'm not worthy of that which you're asking me to do. And the response from the Almighty is, yeah, I know that. Uh, I didn't ask for you to be worthy of anything when I called you. I was only asking for your response to do something. And your response is Hineni. I mean, for Moses, though he has argued along the way, his response is still, okay, I, I, I'm in. I, I'm in with this. I want to bring in, um, I'll let you go to this on your own. In Matthew chapter 19, or excuse me, Matthew chapter 10, verses 19 to 20, it uh, talks about when you are taken before the courts, uh, don't, don't consider, don't, and this has been used out of context, uh, very bad by teachers sometimes, they say, well, you know, I just get up and I don't give any thought to what I'm going to say. Really? Well, that's why when you said something, it didn't make any sense. Uh, but there is coming a day in which we, you and I, will be placed into situations in which you're going to look around and go, I am not worthy to be here. And I'm really not worthy to say anything. But yet, there's going to be that, as we called it in the Pentecostal, in the Assembly of God, that unction. There's going to be a, a, a thumb in your back, if you would. There's going to be words that well up within you. But, the moment that a person loses the aspect and begins to think that they are worthy of their calling. Uh, I, I can tell you, and this is, this is it's not a false humility, uh, there's never been a day, and I've been in ministry now for, uh, oh, what is it, 30 years or something, over 30 years, Thirty. this will be 34, something like that. There's never been a day that I felt worthy of, of what I do. And um, I hope I never feel that way. Because I'm kind of thinking that the day that I feel worthy of doing what I do should probably be the last day that I do what I do. But the, our feeling of unworthiness must be overcome by our revelation of how worthy He is, of how holy Kadosh He is, and that it is the I'm just kind of thinking this through as I'm saying. There's no notes on this. Um, the, the, the whole thought that his altar, that coal. I mean, think about this. The, the coal of the altar had the blood of the altar. Okay? The, the coals upon the altar had the blood of of the altar they were stained with the blood from the sacrificial animal and so the blood the 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 coals of the heavenly altar would be stained with the blood of the messiah there's power in the blood yeah got uh, that's a great place for that song just remember that when he asks you to say something, he's not asking you for your worthiness. 
He is proving His worthiness through you. He's not asking you for your holiness. He's proving His holiness through you. Now, at chapter 7, he's, he's not going to listen. Uh, he's going to be stubborn. <clears throat> and by the way, Moses, and I, I'm not going to tell you this up front, but when you, when you go into these settings, uh, you're going to be challenged. Okay? The, you know, let my people go. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. No, no, that's, that's not how it's going to work out. Um, to the point that when he throws that rod down, he's probably expecting, you know, well, if it turns into a snake, okay, whatever. But, he, you know, he's not expecting the, the magicians of Pharaoh to be able to do the same thing. It's like, wait a minute, I didn't quite see that happening. But see, there, there's something far greater that's going on is that the last time that Moses threw a rod down, it became a snake. And those that have heard, I didn't do this teaching on the last Torah portion, but uh, that snake, in my estimation, was, you know, that rod, very briefly, that rod was his, that staff was, was his identity. It had carvings in it. And so he saw himself, that's, that's who he was, his autobiography. He saw himself as a failure. He, he saw himself as unworthy. And so when he threw that down, he saw that the, the serpent of, that, of, of, his, of his thoughts of who he was. And it was maybe, maybe as he picked it up, all of that was, was totally taken away. Um, but now when he throws it down again, it becomes a, a serpent once again. And he's reminded of his past. But his past is now what helps him to overcome. That which he has gone through, that which he had went through for some 40 years or so in the wilderness. Some believe it was 40, um, some believe it was 60. But that which, that which he learned through his past, that which he learned because of the, the incident with the Hebrews, the, the incident that we read about last week of, of killing the, the, uh, the Egyptian. All that he learned during that time, all that he learned in Midian, all that he learned with Jethro, all of that is now the strength, his overcoming strength. So that's a fascinating thing that he can take our past, no matter how shady our past is no, no matter no matter what is there he can take our past he can erase it but then use it that he can take our past and make it our strengths to keep us moving forward now I, i'm not going to go through all of the um all the plagues if you notice you go to over to the book of revelation it kind of mirror images here a little bit, a lot, um, that that which happened will happen. But I want to go all the way down to chapter 9. And it's uh, uh, a, a verse that I've, I have uh, circled here that uh, in verse, I'll start in verse 15 of chapter 9. But now... I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with such severe plagues that you have been wiped off of the earth. It is for this very reason that I've kept you alive, to show you my power, so that my name may resound throughout the whole earth. Hmm. Who's he talking to? Well, obviously, he's, he's talking to, to Pharaoh, okay? Uh, Pharaoh, through all these plagues, there, there wasn't a moment in time that I couldn't have killed you. You know, I could have uh, caused something to happen and you'd be dead already. But I've kept you alive for a reason. And the reason is that I want to show you my complete work. In fact, I, I want to show my complete work through you. So let me ask you again the question. Who is he talking to? Is he talking to Pharaoh? Pharaoh? Is, is he talking to Moses? 
Hmm. There's a there's a thought for you. As 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 Moses is giving these words to Pharaoh, is he also thinking, wait a minute, these these words are resounding in my own life. That the Father has kept me alive. Why? He's kept me alive for the purpose that his name would resound throughout the whole earth. So I ask a question again. Who is he talking to? Is he talking to Pharaoh? Is he talking to Moses? Or is he talking to you and I? Okay, I got it. A, B, C, D, E, all the above. I think he's talking to all of us. Uh, I've said this probably a few months ago. As I talk to people in this, this walk, there's, there's something that comes out all the time. Uh, people say, you know, I, I don't know how I survived this long. I don't know how I lived. I, I've, I've lived through things, and I don't know why, and, and I, I should have died. And Why, why do you keep you alive? They, they, I mean, this was before you were following him. You were like running away from him, and, and, and you, could, you look back now and go, <laughs> wow, he was there anyway. Unworthy, yeah. I kept he, I, I've kept you alive. I I read these these uh, these words first in in the year two thousand five, that they they just kind of came off the page at me that year. This was uh, this was a year about two years into joined to Hashem, and um, I I had been in Israel and I think it was after this I had talked to a friend of mine. He says you know. Uh, with what had happened to to you guys, uh, to you in, in, in your ministry, says they said, I we didn't expect you to survive. And, and I, I I wrote down the year, and I circled the the part of this verse because I want to go back every single year that I read through the Torah. I want to be reminded that the only reason that I have that I'm here. Is because he did this. Okay, moving on. Um, verse twenty is a, is an interesting. Uh, uh, whoever among Pharaoh's servants feared what Yudhavave had said, his slaves had said, had his slaves and livestock escape into the houses. I'm still back on the last thought. But those who had no regard for what Yudhavave had said left their slaves and their livestock in the field. Uh, this is the first time that I can see that there is a, a, this is an act of faith, not just by the Hebrews, but the attention is now uh, the, the, the Egyptians, some of the Egyptians. And, and so is this, maybe it's the, the darkness, but is, is this kind of where some of that mixed multitude began to come from? People that had, had seen Pharaoh as God and are now like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe these Hebrews have something. And now they're coming to the Hebrews. Expect that time to happen somewhere in the, in the midst of, of the days that we're in. Uh, verse 23, Moshe reached out with his staff. Hey, notice it says his staff. Originally it was the rod of Yudhe Vavhe. Then it was, it was Aaron's staff that was used. But now it says that Moshe reached out with his staff. There is a place that Moshe has, has become confident. Not, not, not prideful, but confident in the person that he has, that the Father has brought him to be. You and I need to experience that. And lastly, Pharaoh, this is verse 35, Pharaoh was made hard-hearted. He didn't let the people of Israel go, just as Yudhavave had said through Moshe. The word there is hazak. We know that as hazak, hazak, benit kazak. Be strong, be strong, and let us be strengthened. It's the, word I, the words I say every, every week on this program. Be strong, hazak. Pharaoh was made hazak. The line's drawn, folks. It's not being drawn. The line is drawn. Will our heart, our inward being, our inward man, 
will we become hazak strengthened for yudhe vavhe toward him or toward the world choice is ours in the end shabbat shalom shavua tov have a blessed prosperous week Bezrat Hashem. Yeah, we'll see what happens. See you again next week. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate your prayers this week. Uh, just for direction, for guidance, wisdom, all of those things. Favor as, uh, as I deal with it. <laughs> Almost made it. Favor for all the things that, uh, that need to come together in this next week. So, uh, But as far as for you, Hazak, <laughs> be strong. Yivarechach Adonai V'yishmarecha Ya'er Adonai Pana Belecha V'yichunecha Yisa Adonai Sam Lecha Shalom